in the New World. Most of the greatest pirates hold a territory guarded by countless subordinates over which they rule like an enormous criminal syndicate. Tackling them with a single crew is pointless. You'll never even catch a glimpse of their captains. Hello and welcome to One Piece 101, the series that breaks down everyone and everything in the One Piece world. Today we are going to explore one of the most influential crime organizations to have ever existed in the series, the Don Quixote family. The Don Quixote family are an underworld group founded and led by their namesake, Don Quixote do Flamingo, and their primary activities include illegal trade of weapons, devil fruits, and of course, slavery. The group's leader, Dolph Flamingo, was a former world noble who was exiled from the Holy Land of Marijuana following the actions of his father. And so, after murdering his father for ruining his life of luxury, with very little choice left, Dolph Flamingo pursued the route of piracy and was able to secure the loyalty of four very important individuals who would go on to become high-ranking figures within the organization, each distinguished by the codename of a suit of cards. Those four figures were Treble, quite possibly Dolphamingo's most trusted officer and the man who fostered his already extreme cruelty as a child. Treble would go on to hold the seat of club within the organization and was actually the one responsible for acquiring Dolphamingo's devil fruit, the Ito Ito no Mi. Not to be outdone though, Treble is a dangerous fruit user in his own right, having consumed the Better Better no Mi, a paramecia type fruit that allows him to produce uh, mucus. Then we have Diamante, holder of the seat of diamond and known as one of the finest combatants within the Don Quixote family. He has a comical habit of constantly denying any flattering thing that anybody ever says about him until they finally acquiesce, at which point he rather suddenly accepts the compliment. He is also the user of the Hira Hira no Mi, a paramecia type fruit that allows him to flatten anything he touches, including himself, much like a flag. It's one of those fruits that doesn't, you know, sound amazing, but may actually be pretty fantastic. Maybe. Moving along, we have Pika, a fairly intimidating yet quiet individual who holds the seat of spade. He's primarily quiet because he has an unfortunate and absurdly high-pitched voice, which causes everyone around him to uncontrollably break into laughter. However, this is usually met with very swift retribution because Pika is no joke. Possessing a devil fruit that allows him to assimilate with any form of stone, except sea stone, I guess, that he comes into contact with, thus making him a Godzilla level threat. And the final founding member of the group is Virgo. As with just about everyone else so far, Virgo also has a ridiculous quirk, whereby he is alleged Allegedly such a messy eater that entire meals become stuck to his face. Virgo is also the only one of the original founding members of the group who does not possess a devil fruit, but he more than makes up for that by being an absolute natural powerhouse with a superb mastery of armament haki. Virgo was the original holder of the Seed of Heart and originally given the alias of Corazon. However, early on in the family's history, Virgo was ordered to infiltrate the Marines and the Heart Seat would be passed on to Doflamingo's brother, Rosinante, who was then given the Corazon alias. However, eventually Rosinante would be revealed to be a spy of the Marines who was sent to infiltrate the Don Quixote family. Much like Virgo was sent to infiltrate the Marines, really. Rather notably, Rosinante's true allegiances were discovered in his efforts to assist a young Trafalgar Law, who was an associate of the Don Quixote family as a child and suffering from a terminal disease known as Amber Lead Syndrome. And after successfully stealing a devil fruit known as the Ope Ope no Mi and force feeding it to Law, which would have the effect of allowing Law to cure his own disease, Rosinante would be killed by Dolphamingo for his betrayal. So this left the heart seat vacant, which is, you know, quite fitting because you could describe Dolphamingo as a rather heartless man. And that's the way it would stay for the remainder of the organization's lifespan. However, this would not stop the growth of the other three seats, each of whom would come to acquire a set of their own executive officers and a specific function within the family. To examine that, first up we have the Pika Army, and their subdivision was known as the Assault Squad, with their purpose being commando-style missions that generally involve their members traveling outside of their home territory. Further members of this group include Gladius, a man with an exceptionally short temper and a very explosive devil fruit to match it. Buffalo, by far the largest member of the crew, not including Pika's fruit powers, and who has a very handy devil fruit that excels in the art of transportation. And Baby Five, who is an absolute gun. Like, quite literally. As she possesses a devil fruit that allows her to change her body into various types of weapons, making combat her definite specialty. Next up, we have the Diamante Army, also known as the Fighter Brigade. And the primary difference between them and the Pika Army is that these guys specialize in head-on combat rather than any sort of careful mission. And they are generally deployed to ensure order within the family's home territory. This is also the only division to have four executive officers under their umbrella, who consist of Lao Ji, an elderly gent, who despite his constant gag of quite literally dying and coming back to life, is a major force to be reckoned with. Mark Weiss, a very hairy and wide sir, who wields the Tun Tun fruit, which allows him to manipulate his weight to truly astonishing amounts. Dellinger, a hybrid between a human being and a fighting fish who possesses an incredible bloodlust and a habit of wearing high heels. And Senor Pink, a man baby with an incredibly tragic past, but a devil fruit that allows him to swim pretty much anywhere so long as it's not in actual water. And then we have the Treble Army, which are the special powers team, consisting of a group of individuals with bizarre and heavily overpowered devil fruit abilities. These folks are Gio 
Viola, a larger lady who can turn anyone or anything into modern art, or perhaps any form of art. Her powers are actually kind of incredibly vague, much like art itself. Viola, a princess of the Dressrosa Kingdom who has the ability to see through quote unquote everything and even read the minds of others, whilst at the same time being able to maintain constant surveillance of at the very least an entire nation. And Sugar, who despite her looks is actually 22 years old and has one of the most insane devil fruits in the entire series, which allows her to turn anybody she touches into a toy, as well as go on to issue them commands and basically create an army of toy slaves. Outside of these three divisions, there are two more executive officers who fulfill more rogue purposes, one of which is the aforementioned Virgo, who went on to become a vice admiral in the Marines, using his extraordinary influence to fulfill the desires of Doflamingo, as well as Monet, the older sister of Sugar and a Logia type devil fruit user, which allows her to conjure, manipulate and become Snow. In any case, with this incredibly powerful crew, the Don Quixote family would secure themselves a position as one of the world's most revered and influential criminal organizations, with Doflamingo adopting the alias of Joker to head up the enterprise, whilst commandeering the entire nation of Dressrosa to use as their base of operations. And over time, their enterprise grew even more, to the point where outside of their executives, there were 2,000 soldiers at the family's disposal, including the particularly familiar character of Bellamy. But business for the Don Quixote family really picked up when they succeeded in securing Kaido as a client, who was one of the four emperors of the sea. Kaido contracted Doflamingo to produce a massive series of artificial devil fruits for his own crew, the Beast Pirates, with the eventual aim of gathering enough power to engulf the world in a massive war. In order to accomplish this, Doflamingo subcontracted Caesar Clown to develop a substance known as Sad, which was the integral element within the artificial devil fruits, which would become known as Smiles. However, the family's success would not last forever, as at the height of their power, they were dealt a crushing blow from a pirate alliance between Monkey D. Luffy and Trafalgar Law, the latter of whom formed the alliance with the direct intention of taking down Doflamingo. And as their first action, they captured Caesar Clown and destroyed the Sad Factory on Punk Hazard, before making their way to Dressrosa and causing untold chaos on the island, with one member of the Straw Hats managing to knock out Sugar and revert everyone she had ever turned into a toy back into their original forms. What resulted following this was a full-scale uprising on the island of Dressrosa, the defeat of all of the Don Quixote family's officers, with the exception of Viola, who betrayed the family to help her real family, and Baby Five, who uh, fell in love. Even Doflamingo himself was brought down by the gigantic fists of Monkey D. Luffy, leading to the complete defeat and subsequent destruction of the family. Some more fun facts about the Don Quixote family. Despite the name Don Quixote being a single word in Japanese, English translations have separated it into two, being Don and Quixote, quite possibly due to the reasonable thought that it was a reference to the Spanish novel Don Quixote. And yes, it is pronounced as Don Quixote. I know a lot of you like to giggle in the comments section because it sounds like donkey, but uh, there it is. Rather sadly, two members of the Don Quixote family have actually died in the series, those two being Virgo and Monet, one due to an explosion and the other due to having her heart stabbed by a mad scientist clown. Quite notably, her heart and her were not in the same room at the time. It should be noted that the actions of this organization were greatly assisted by the fact that Doflamingo went on to become a warlord of the sea, and so his operations were more or less overlooked by the world government. However, prior to that, he and the family were treated as threats to the world government, and so bounties were placed on the heads of many of its members. Now, interestingly, and oddly enough, according to the Vivia Card data book, three of the family's top officers being Treble, Diamante, and Pika, all had the exact same bounty of 99 million berries on their heads. So earlier I mentioned that Dellinger had a habit of wearing high heels, and that's actually because he joined the Don Quixote family when he was a baby and was primarily raised by Jola who treated him as a girl. Jola furthermore went on to try and raise Law in this way as well, and were it not for his stubbornness, Law could have turned out like this. Weirdly enough, it has been confirmed that there was a little something something going on between Doflamingo and Viola, in which Oda has stated that it was a complex and passionate situation for the latter, both loving and hating Doflamingo, which is the reason why she refers to him by the much more informal name of Dofi. And finally, a truly useless fact, at one stage in his life, family member Lao Ji, for whatever reason, wore rabbit ears, which is very fun. But that pretty much does it for the Don Quixote family. If you enjoyed this video and the content this channel produces in general, then please do consider donating to the Grand Line Review Patreon, because the support of all of you amazing people is what continues to make this channel possible. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, but apply to other anime and manga series, then please do check out my second channel, New World Review, for all of your wider needs. And if you'd like to join the fun at any time, then please do head over to my Discord server, where a wide array of shenaniganry takes place on a daily basis. And finally, please do comment with who, what, or where you'd like to see featured in the next one Piece 101. You know, it was always a big shame that we never got to see Doflamingo's eyes even after his defeat. But it's alright though, because I'm like 99.9% .9 sure 
that they probably looked like this. Curse that handsome devil.